you're looking at diesel 2.0, and by that I don't mean the displacement of this engine, which does happen to be two liters. I'm talking about the latest in cutting edge diesel technology from Diamond Aircraft. We're here at Diamond's London, Ontario factory, and we're going to take a look at the new Austro AE300, which has been installed in the DA42NG to replace the Teeler 1.7 and 2.0 engines. Now this engine makes more power on less fuel than the Teelert did, and you have to wonder if Ostro reinvented the laws of thermodynamics. Well, they really haven't. All they've done is applied the latest in cutting-edge diesel technology to a practical aircraft engine. Let's start by looking at the big picture. This engine was adapted from an engine developed by Mercedes-Benz for the A-Class, and the A-Class is a small sedan that's sold in Europe quite popular. Mercedes has made more than a million of these engines and they continue to manufacture and improve them. It's a four-cylinder water and oil-cooled engine. It's turbocharged and in this version it develops 168 horsepower. It's controlled by a pair of Fadex and we'll look at those a little bit more closely in a bit. Uh, so let's drill down take a look at some of the details. One of the interesting things about the AE300 is that Ostro used cast iron blocks, not the aluminum blocks that Teelert used for the 1.7 and 2.0 engines. Ostro did this for a couple of reasons. First of all, the blocks come directly from Mercedes and they don't need much modification. And second, the cast iron blocks are more durable so they can be overhauled. This engine is designed to be overhauled. It's not a replacement engine as with the Teelert uh, series. As with the Teelert engines, the head has dual overhead cams operated by roller levers. These aren't modified much, if at all. They come directly from Mercedes and they're bolted right onto the AE300. And again, that gives Ostro a cost and durability advantage. In adapting the Mercedes design for aircraft use, Ostro did make some changes. One of the big ones was they moved the turbocharger from the lower portion of the engine up to the top. And that means that oil drains out of the turbocharger back into the sump. There's no need for a scavenge pump. It has a fuel system built by Bosch. Uh, Bosch organized a specific general aviation uh, segment to engineer this system. It has a common rail system that runs at about 23,000 PSI, which is a bit higher than the Teeler. And that higher pressure makes it possible for this engine to be a little bit more economical because the higher the rail pressure, the better able the FADEC is to shape the pulse, the fuel pulse, and, and get the most efficiency out of each fuel charge. As I mentioned, the engine is controlled by a pair of EECUs, electronic engine control units. They live down here in the lower cowl. They're two per engine, and they're backed up uh, by a battery. And when we, we do the run-up, which you'll see in the associated uh, video, uh, there's a method for testing both those, uh, both the A and the B channel. It can run on either one. One challenge in adapting automotive engines to aircraft use is that automotive engines typically generate their best power in the 4,000 RPM range, but you want to spin a prop at 2,400 RPM. Now, the traditional way of solving this is to use a reduction gearbox, and that's what Ostro has done here. This gearbox reduces the engine RPM 1.6 to 1. The gears in this particular box are meant to be more robust than the Teeler gearbox was, so they're about twice the size, and they run in a constant oil bath. One problem unique to diesels is that because of the high cylinder pressures, when each cylinder fires, it sends a strong pulse down the crankshaft through the gearbox and out to the prop. And that's one reason that diesel engines haven't been able to successfully run metal props. Teeler's solution to this problem was to isolate the gearbox in the crankshaft using an automotive style clutch that allowed a little bit of slippage. It proved to be a bit of a maintenance headache. So Ostro's solution is to develop a torsion vibration dampener, and that is essentially a pair of discs, a disc within a disc, that are isolated by a couple of heavy springs. Now Ostro predicts that this will require less maintenance and will be more durable, and in fact it doesn't have an inspection interval at all. It, it's, it, its service life is expected to be about a thousand hours, which is the current life of the engine. So much for the technical aspects of the engine, let's talk numbers. The A300 is capable of generating 168 horsepower versus 135 horsepower for the Teward engines. It will maintain that to about 10,000 feet MSL. Above that, it trails off gracefully and will still generate 135 horsepower at about 18,000 feet. Weight-wise, the AE300 is heavier. It's about 112 pounds heavier than the Teward installation was. To offset that, Diamond certified the DA42NG for 4,180 pounds versus 3,927 pounds for the Teeler version. 
overall you get about a 30 pound increase in payload. The brake specific fuel consumption of the AE300 is 0.33 pounds per horsepower hour versus 0.35 for the Teeler. So the AE300 is a bit more efficient. Currently, the planned TBO for the AE300 is 1,000 hours, and that's expected to increase to 2,400 hours once the engine uh, develops in service history. The engine is overhaulable. The current projected price is about $17,000 for an overhaul based on a 1,000-hour TBO run. That works out to about $17 per hour. If you compare that to the typical Lycoming, it's three or four dollars more. Those economics uh, are bound to change as we go forward, but for now they look pretty promising. This is Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer. Thanks for watching. For a detailed economic analysis of the Ostro engines, see the October 2009 issue of Aviation Consumer at aviationconsumer.com.